evening and welcome to the Scotiabank Pond. It's time for the 11th annual GTHL Top Prospects game powered by Under Armour featuring 40 of the top GTHL minor midget players. Hello everybody, I am Bill Giannopoulos alongside Peter Curtis. First and foremost everyone, feels amazing to be back. I'm thrilled, excited and honored to be back. Pete and myself, we were covering the GTHL for five years, once a week. It was the best time. I still to this day wish we could do it every week. But Absolutely. that being said, Pete, it's great to be back on air with you, calling what should be an awesome game with some great players. Well, it's the 11th annual one. You've been part of this process in many years. Picking 40 of the best prospects, it's not easy. Nope. You, you got a lot of names on the table, but there's a lot of intriguing names. You got the World Junior Camp coming up, the Toronto Marlies. There's a real excitement in the month of December. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we'll talk a lot about the team success that we've seen from some of these teams here because they're featured plentifully with tons of players represented from, you know, about our top four or five teams that have elevated themselves so far this season. But tonight, it's a blender. We're seeing Marlies with JRC. We're seeing everybody thrown together. What are you expecting out of this one? Well, the format used to be you'd kind of put everyone together, right? Now you're playing against teammates. I think this is really the Hockey Canada way. You want to be able to adapt, get used to new teammates. It happens at the World Junior Camp, right? It's being held down oh, yeah. the road. So for these players, it's learn quickly, adapt to what you know about your teammates, and put all your best effort. And I mean, we look at some of the earlier years of the prospects game, McDavid. We got to see Marner. We got to see Domi. Early years. Now we've seen the Hughes brothers transition to the NHL. Barrett Hayton in Arizona. So players today looking to become those players we talk about a few years from now. Well, Tom Wilson played in the first one. Hard to believe he's got a Stanley Cup ring. You talk about all the other players. Owen Tippett. And then Jack Hughes was here how many years ago? It seems like it was just a couple years ago as he's an 18-year-old in the NHL. So some great storylines to follow through their pro career. All right, well, we'll talk about the celebrity coaches, a bit about what's going on this season, and plenty more. We've got an action-packed game to look forward to. Let's throw it down now to Doug Ireland for our player and coach introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hello and welcome to the Scotiabank Pond for the GTHL's 2019 Top Prospects game, powered by Under Armour. Now it's time to meet our teams, starting with Team Stacy Primo Tucker. On defense, from the Toronto Junior Canadians, wearing number two, please welcome Ethan Best. <laughs> On defense, from the Toronto Marlboros, wearing number four, Isaiah George. <laughs> from the Reps Hockey Club, wearing number five, Alec Leonard. From the Mississauga Senators, wearing number six, Nicholas DeAngelis. From the Don Mills Flyers, wearing number 21, Marco Stoikov. From the Toronto Titans, wearing number 22, Emerson Miller. Your forwards, from the Toronto Junior Canadians, wearing number eight, Pano Fimmins. From the Toronto Marlboros, wearing number nine, please welcome Paul Ludwinski. From the Toronto Titans, wearing number 10, Nicholas Moldenhauer. From the Mississauga Senators, wearing number 11, Yon Lashing. From the Toronto Young Nationals, wearing number 12, Jordan Carafield. From the Toronto Junior Canadians, wearing number 14, Kyan Holdenby. From the Toronto Titans, wearing number 15, Hayden Simpson. From the Markham Majors, wearing number 16, Julian Fascinelli. 
from the Toronto Titans, wearing number 17, Anthony Piccinino. From the Toronto Young Nationals, wearing number 18, Sad Urso Marzo. From the Toronto Young Nationals, wearing number 19, Max Sagan. From the Toronto Marlboros, wearing number 20, please welcome Luke Devlin. And your goaltenders, from the Reps Hockey Club, wearing number one, Adam Ricci. And from the Toronto Titans, wearing number 30, Liam Stuska. Not dressed tonight, from the Toronto Marlboros, wearing number three is Matthew Jovanovic. And from the Junior Canadians, wearing number seven, Michael Bushinger. On the bench, she's the newest addition behind the bench. From Mississauga, Ontario, she played some of her minor hockey years with GTHL clubs and would go on to represent Canada in the U18 World Juniors, winning gold, and in 2017-2018, an Olympic silver medal. She also won CWHL Rookie of the Year, the season after becoming a CWHL champion with the Markham Thunder. In her coaching debut, everyone, please give a warm welcome to Laura Stacy. <laughs> Joining Stacy behind the bench, he's from Scarborough, Ontario, and played his minor hockey in the MTHL. He was a first round pick of the Buffalo Sabres in the 1994 entry draft and his NHL career spanned over 15 seasons, wrapping up his pro career playing with his hometown Toronto Maple Leafs in 2010. Please welcome Wayne Primo. <laughs> Last but not least, he is one of only four players to win the Memorial Cup on three occasions. The caster, Alberta native, is best remembered as a gritty winger with the Leafs between 1999 and 2008. He was not drafted until the sixth round of the 1993 NHL entry draft, but this did not stop him from racking up 947 regular season games with four NHL clubs, including 531 with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Please welcome Darcy Tucker! Assistant coach for Team Stacy Primo Tucker from the Toronto Jun Junior Canadians, please welcome John Wynn Stanley. Your trainer for Team Stacy Primo Tucker, also from the Junior Canadians, is Aaron Sellen. Now fans, please welcome to the ice, Team Clark Weaver Corson. On to fans, from the Junior Canadians, wearing number two is Ty Nelson. From the Toronto Young Nationals, wearing number three, Sean Ramsey. From the Junior Canadians, wearing number four, Thomas Sermon. From the Junior Canadians, wearing number five, Noah Van Vliet. From the Toronto Titans, wearing number six is Matthew Morden. From the Toronto Marlboros, wearing number seven, please welcome Caden Muir. Your forwards, 
from the Toronto Titans, wearing number eight is Coach Delridge. From the Toronto Young Nationals, wearing number nine, Zach LaVoy. From the Toronto Marlboros, wearing number 10, Lorenzo Bonayuto. From the Junior Canadians, wearing number 11, Aiden Castle. From the Junior Canadians, wearing number 12, please welcome Aiden Pooley. From the Toronto Marlboros, wearing number 14, Eli Sebastian. From the Toronto Titans, wearing number 15, Aaron Andrade. From the Reps Hockey Club, wearing number 16, Joshua Vogelsberg. From the Reps Hockey Club, wearing number 17, Joshua Bayless. From the Toronto Titans, wearing number 18 is Jake Sedera. From the Toronto Red Wings, wearing number 19 is Rodion Tatarenko. From the Don Mills Flyers, wearing number 20, please welcome Julian Bianconi. And your goaltenders, from the Toronto Young Nationals, wearing number one, Kyle Downey. From the Vaughn Kings, wearing number 30, please welcome Dominico DiVincenti. <laughs> On the bench, he's from Kelvington, Saskatchewan, but now calls Toronto home. He followed up an impressive junior career by being selected first overall in the 1985 NHL entry draft. Named captain of the Leafs in 1991-92 and helped the team reach consecutive conference finals in 1993 and again in 1994. His number 17 jersey was retired by the Leafs in 2016. He currently works as a community representative with the Leafs organization. Please welcome Leafs great Wendell Clark! Born in nearby Bramley, undrafted by the NHL, he still went on to play 633 games in the league over 14 seasons. He helped the Montreal Canadiens reach the NHL conference, conference Finals in the spring of 2014. Please welcome Mike Weaver! <laughs> Alongside Clark and Weaver behind the bench is another fan favorite with Leafs supporters. Born in Midland, Ontario, he was selected in the first round of the 1984 NHL Entry Draft by the Montreal Canadiens. He played 1,156 regular season NHL games, including 197 over three seasons with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Please welcome Shane Corson. The assistant coach for Team Clark Weaver Corson from the Toronto Young Nationals is Paul Tamburo. <laughs> and the trainer for Team Clark Weaver Corson from Team Clark Weaver Corson, also from the Toronto Young Nationals, is Kyle Bajorski. <laughs> Once again, let's hear it for all of our top prospects here tonight. Your officials for tonight. Your linesmen are Glenn McKechnie and Connor Laviolette. Referees are Justin Lyon and Matt Scott. Okay, 
Please rise if you're able to for a moment of silence in honor of Graham Sermon, father of junior Canadians player Thomas, who tragically passed away last month. Our thoughts are with the Sermon family during this difficult time. Thank you. The GTHL is proud to welcome Under Armour as the title sponsor of the GTHL Top Prospects game powered by Under Armour. Here tonight to take part in the ceremonial puck drop is Commissioner for the Ontario Hockey League. Please welcome David Branch. Joining him at center ice is president of the GTHL. Please welcome Don West. Can we please have the number 19s from each team? That's Max Sagan from Team Stacy Primo Tucker and Rodion Tatarenko from Team Clark Weaver Corson to center ice for our ceremonial puck drop. Now, please stand if you're able to, remove your caps, and welcome the GTHL's very own Taylor and Rody. All right, welcome back to the Scotiabank Pond. Nice job there on the player introductions. Our national anthem, Bill Giannopoulos, Peter Curtis. We're going to go with Billy G and Peter K tonight because I don't even want to say my own last name that many times, Pete. But for these young men, and I do say these young men, right now, this GTHL Top Prospects game, you look around at this crowd, I mean, what an experience just for these young guys with also the wisdom they get from their uh, celebrity coaches. Well, last night they had practice, which was really grabbing some of that Under Armour swag as they're the sponsors. So they were kind of losing their mind in the dressing rooms. And then you walk out here. I'm gonna say we're at 1,200 people, Bill, because that's the capacity. It's packed. We were sold out early this morning on the day of the game. It's always a big draw. This is a big deal. This is the biggest crowd they've played in front of in their career. Absolutely, and we're looking forward to getting that. Puck drop here, first period 20 on the board, and here we go. Our 11th annual GTHL Top Prospects game is underway. Here's Moldenhauer, cross ice, nice find there. Quick shot, that one is high and over the glass. 
So that was number 11, Loshing, as this one goes down. DeAngelis gets to it first behind the goal line. Nice quick pass there with two four checkers on him. He finds the gap. Fimis now keep an eye on him. The skilled junior Canadians forward. Shot deflects up and over the net. Now he gets it back behind the net. Looks for a centering pass. It's deflected and DeAngelis has it again. And now his pass for Leonard just goes off as the light jerseys will make their first change. So instead of maybe going Clark Weaver Corson, we're gonna go with light. And Stacy Primo Tucker, we're gonna go with dark. Because by the time I announce every celebrity coaching name, the puck's gonna be in the back of the net. Here is Castle now for the lights. Sends it behind the goal line. Getting to that first, that is Emerson Miller. He was called up, replacing a player who's unable to play, a Toronto Titans defenseman. Here's Haldenby. His pass is intercepted almost there by Sebastian. It's bouncing around. We have a bit of a collision there. Just at the top of the circle, play continues. Castle brings it back the other way on the near side. He cannot get past Miller. He stood up there nicely. Good stick check. And Haldenby comes back the other way. He loses it there to Van Vliet. Van Vliet now looking for the puck. It's behind him. Now centering out in front. And quickly it's steered aside by the light color team. Setteroff leads the attack going the other way with speed. His shot there is steered aside easily. By Liam Stushka, who's the starter. And this one for the dark color jerseys. We'll talk about our starting goalies when we get a break there, Pete. As we've had a great pace so far to this one. Going end to end. Back where we go. The other way, Ludvinsky for Simpson. Tries a little sneak pass there, but could not fool Matthew Morden. Morden, the Toronto Titans defenseman, has it now. Couple of quick passes, and Andrade's going the other way he gets it in deep and it's cleared around the boards by the dark jerseys and the other way we almost have it we do almost have an odd man rush but that's intercepted there Morden's been busy this shift but he's looked good he has a nice calmness to him there I like the fact that Ethan Best the defenseman for the team in black he was leading the rush so you'll see players go for it on a big shift here at the top prospects game and this one's cleared out and down the ice and we will have a stoppage in place. So speaking of goaltenders, I mentioned who we had starting for the dark color team, Liam Stushka, the Toronto Titans tendy. And uh, going the other way, Pete, it's the Toronto Young Nats, Kyle Downing. Well, all four goalies are part of a really deep pool this year. Some tough selections had to be made. Downey's got this great positional game. Stuchka, a big guy, but he likes to read and react, Bill. Kind of like a Marty Brodeur. He wants to kick out every yep. now and then, a little bit of a showman. So we won't see Downey make plays of the week because he's always in great position. Just in case you figure out why you don't get excited <laughs> about his saves, because he's so strong. Here's a chance now with a shot. And there's a nice calm save by Stushka there on the snapshot by defenseman Ty Nelson from the Junior Canadians, sporting the best hair out of all the players who came out for the player introductions. Easily gets my award for that. And you notice they were like looking in the reflection of the glass <laughs> while we were trying to get a little bit of media work down. You know, how do you pronounce your name? They were definitely worried about the flow, right? It had oh to yeah. look good. Oh yeah. I can say he's number one in my books for the flow. As the dark colored jersey is here, they try to get it out. And the four check being put on there by the light. Tatarenko throws his weight around there. A little check in the corner. DeAngelis will try again. It's a good four check here by the light colored jerseys, making it difficult here. I know it hasn't amounted to a quality scoring chance yet, but here's another interception. Perhaps we're going to get it. Bianconi with the shot, and that one stopped. It's behind Stushka, and he just, and I mean just, gets a glove on that before it's in the back of the net for our first goal. Being Coney representing the Don Mills Flyers. He's a big space kind of guy. He always pushes off, finds a way, and this time he's left right in front of the slot area, and Stuska's looking up, and I thought he'd be a big kick there, but he knew he was sitting on the <laughs> puck and had to remain as calm as he could. There's Bonayuto pressing. Real aggressive press in the offensive zone by the light colored jerseys. They're going right for it. As here's a long outlet though. This is the byproduct of perhaps pitching a bit. Quick shot. That one stopped by Downey. Space opened up in the neutral zone from all that pressure and it led to a great chance. Best chance perfect for the dark square, colors. Though. He's a perfect square. Oh, yeah. Defending a square net, right? It hit him right in the shoulder. You called it. Here's Miller with a shot. Gets through. Big rebound. Oh, I'm not sure if that one was just shot wide by 
Femis or if Downey got a piece of that one, either way, what a chance there. Well, Downey should have a scouting report on every opposing player, but how about his own teammates that'll be shooting on him? I mean, he sees them three, four times a <laughs> week a in practice, point. so he knows what they want to try and trick here as it'll be exciting to, you know, maybe stop one of your teammates on a breakaway here in a big game. And this one's gloved easily by Liam Stushka from the Toronto Titans. Toronto Titans right now sitting in fourth place in the standings overall. Pete, I've taken a look. This is an offensive juggernaut so far of our top teams. They have scored in 21 games, five goals or more in 10 of those. So that's almost 50% of their games. They're just lighting up the lamp just carried by some solid offense. And it's a great loop this year. I mean, it's oh, yeah. great when you have a powerhouse. That's a real dynasty you get excited about. But this year, you got a top three, and behind them, four, five, six, seven. They're not far behind. I mean, every game seems to be a challenge. In those years where we've seen powerhouses win 9-1, to one, yeah. that doesn't help anyone's development game. So a real balance in the league. The Toronto Titans hosted the Bantam OHFs last year. They were champions. They beat the Marlies, who upset the Junior Canadians and all of these teams are back in the mix. Gotta love, you love seeing it. As play continues here, we're just past the 15 minute mark, still scoreless. Now here's a chance in on a partial break. And that one's just shot wide. He was looking for a call there was Paul Levinsky from the Toronto Marlies, one of their potent offensive players. Another chance coming back the other way. That one, I believe it looked like Downey got a piece of that. Now coming back the other way, Eli Sebastian from the Toronto Marlies looks to slow down and he clears it out. Leonard will be the first to get it. From the Reps Hockey Club. Here is Leonard. Pressure on him. Here's that aggressive pressure being applied by the light jerseys one more time. Now along in the corner. Swiped aside. In the far corner they continue to battle. Players slipping and sliding all over the place. We'll have to see what the refs do tonight in these prospects games because we know the uh, special teams don't get a lot of work. Usually at this level, guys don't want to spend two minutes in the box here, right? Absolutely. That's two minutes of playing time. Here is Sermon now. Nice job by Piccinino to get into the shooting lane. Back to Sermon. Takes a stumble but stays on his feet. Cross size. Quick shot gloved again by Stushka. Nice job there. And that Ty Nelson from the JRC has a knack for getting that puck through. He's already done that on several occasions and we're only about seven minutes into this hockey game. And Sermon and Nelson are, t are teammates and Nelson's the offensive guy. Sermon, Mr. Reliable, just doesn't bobble the puck. You saw that little play. And there it is on the big bounce off the boards. We have our opening goal for the light colored jerseys of Team Clark, Weaver, and Corset. And you said it. And they were working it back and forth at the point. And it was Nelson. This time he missed the net, but you know what? He got a fortuitous bounce where it kicks out the other it's side. It's his home rink. It's he knows what's rink. going he on. He might know about that bounce. You see it in the NHL. You see it in the American League. It was Sermon to Nelson off the backboard, and it looked like Tatarenko was in there. And we'll get the announcement from our big booming voice of Doug Ireland. But I'm thinking we Sermon had to Nelson in there too, knew what they were doing absolutely. there. Absolutely. That'll be up to Laura Stacy's team coached in black. And a lot of fun with the fact that Laura Stacy's the celebrity coach, Absolutely. Olympian, gold, medal gold medalist. With John Wynn Stanley, the head coach of the yep. Junior Canadians. Now he got there because his team was one of the top two teams in the standings. He's coached her. What a great story that she can look over and say, you know what, I think I can take it over from now. So it was Sederoff who opens up the scoring. He is the one who got that bounce off the boards. And Nelson. And Sermon with the apples. That opens up your scoring. And we've seen John Winstanley, Stan and he's got Aaron Sellen on the bench with him too. When they were having, when they had Karostalev. Back when we first started, Pete, so they've been Jacob around this. Chikrin, Chikrin was That's that right. year too, and Aaron Sellen, known as Red, taking care of the players behind the scenes while John does the coaching. And of course, on the other side, it's the Toronto Young Nationals. We'll talk about Paul Tamburo along with his trainer, Kyle Bachorski, as well. As and this... just a fun time for them oh, to get yeah. to enjoy this. Now, the first time we did this, Bill, 2009, 2010, 
The game was in January, a little too close to playoffs, and people didn't like it. They thought it kind of took away. We put this game in December now. It's the perfect time, right? Not a lot going on. Right before the holidays. Right before the yeah. holidays. You know, the Marley's Christmas tournament where everyone congregates takes place, you know, at the end of December. So it's a perfect time to highlight this age group because you know what happens in January. It's boom, boom, boom. We're oh, in the yeah. playoffs and OHL Cup, and it's a mad rush. Oh, a lot of fun over the years covering all the action leading up to the playoffs. Here's a shot by Morden, and it's stopped there by Stushka. Little traffic in front. And of course, it always leads up to the OHL Cup, which is always a blast because not only do you get the best in this loop, but you know, we're looking at a guy like Suzuki on Montreal. Is this a centering pass? Great toe save by Stushka, who came out of the Alliance. We saw Konechny as well, elegant Middlesex yeah, Chiefs. Yeah, so absolutely. we get to see a bit of everybody come together there and battle for the best in Ontario. As that shot goes wide, back to the action here. And skating through is Kocha Delic. Delic with it. Quick pass to Bonayuto, just out of his reach. Leonard now sends it the other way, and there's a lot of room on the far side for a breakout opportunity. And that one, maybe a bit of miscommunication. He thought he had a forward ahead of him. But now, the dark team will get it out. Here's Fimis. Fimis, little give and go, works it back. Nice job by Muir, Muir excuse me. Uh, the Toronto Marlies defenseman, Caden Muir, didn't panic there. Dark jerseys all around him. Just stayed in his spot positionally. Isn't That's all that you the game do. now, right? Yeah. Being in position, knowing yeah. where to put your stick. It's so technical. Players get analyzed at every level, but did you have your stick on the proper side of the puck? Austin Matthews has been taking heat for how he takes care of players in the defensive zone. These players are learning the same kind of strategy. It's so Where's important. your body, so with your stick. So you don't have to throw the big body check. You just need to be in the right spot. As referee Matt Scott and Justin Lyon, they're trying to track down the puck off the glass there. So you're gonna see this. I've, I've got my notes here, buddy, oh, partner. Yeah. And everywhere I put notes, it says positionally strong. Yep. Like everyone knows where to be at the right time. They use video in this day and age. So it's tough to not find someone who's out of position here. I mean, it's crazy when you think about what they go through in terms of their off ice training. It's unbelievable. And just to, to remind everybody that they're 15, 15 years old. Uh, when I was 15, Pete, wasn't coming close to being in this kind of shape. And we do have a power play. Coming up, here we go. I believe it looked like a hook there in the neutral zone. So, a chance now for the dark colored team of Stacy, Primo, and Tucker. Let's see what these guys got on the power. Hey, we know the, the weapons. They have all the weapons they need to get a power play goal, but it'll be interesting to see how this combination, this mix of players will come together. Well, they're doing a little huddle there. Ludwinski with the Marlies. He's talking to Simpson. They're saying, okay, what do you do with the Titans? Now you look at what Simpson does. He loves to get in front of that net. Lewinsky, he'll be left, right. You'll find him behind the net. He's all over the place. So let's see how this power play meshes together. But let's not forget the guys killing the penalties. They're pretty good right now Absolutely, as well. Absolutely, yeah. Got to be on alert for a sh potential shorthanded chance as Vogelsberg, well. Vogelsberg, you see him there. He's the ultimate pest there on the four check on the PK. He makes life difficult for you. Here is Leonard gets past one man and it's Ripped around the boards by Ty Nelson. And there goes Vogelsberg again. Not wasting any time to Look make at that. sure. He puts some pressure on them to move the puck up. Might be a little gas, but he's not going to show it. So we got a Marley, a Titan, and a JRC for the forwards right now on the power play. It's our first power play of the game for either side. And this one's sent down as we get some line changes both ways. Approaching the nine minute mark, we've got a minute to go. On the first power play of the game for team Stacy Primo and Tucker in the dark jerseys. Bringing it through is Isaiah George. His centering pass, nobody home, too many sticks in the slot area. Along the sideboards now, here comes Sagan with it. He has the puck. Miller gets it, sends it in down low. Just a nice little play by Miller. I believe that was an intentional, he saw his defensive partner sneaking in back door, so he just knew it would ricochet. If he played his angles correctly, which he did, not a bad little play, would make it something out of nothing, so to speak. And we talk about they're on different teams, but even last night when the guys were checking in for the practice, they know each other. Off ice training, maybe they come through a system, maybe someone moves to a different club. So it's not like they're playing with strangers here. They have a good idea oh, yeah. who their opponents are during the season, and they work out with some of these players 
in the summer, take off that team jersey and work on getting ready for the following season. And Setter off, continuing from where uh, Vogelsberg started on that first PK shift, aggressive once again. Ursa Marzo leaves it there for his teammate. Sebastian is all over his man, giving him a hard time. That'll allow for an easy exit out of the zone as this should do it for the dark team's first power play. Five seconds remain. One last chance potentially there to get in the zone, but some good sticks as getting out of the box now. That was Aiden Castle from the JRC. We'll get an offside. 8-12 to go in the first period. The lone goal, Jake Sederoff from the Toronto Titans. And as Pete mentioned, that combo of Nelson and Sermon get the apples on the opening goal. 8-12 still to go in this period. You can tell Sermon's that Mr. Reliable. Nelson gets it around. And here they are once again. It's a quick pass. The forwards have such faith that the D's going to sort it out, that they're going to get the puck. So, hey, let's turn up river here. Let's go for a skate. And that's exactly what this junior Canadiens offense has been like all season long. Pete, you had mentioned one of our uh, previous games that we had covered for the top prospects. We were talking about Win Stanley and Selin. And think about this. At one point, they had Chikrin and Mete, both NHL players, now NHL defensemen, one with the Canadians, one with the Coyotes. They could throw those two out there at any given time. So they were represented for the JRC at that time. And the feud they had, so to speak, was against McLeod, Radish, Maximovich, Cliff Poo of the Toronto Marlies. So you had the studs on the back end taking on the offensive studs. We remember in the prospects game, it was actually Adam Timlin, who is not even originally on the roster, who scores the big goal that sent us into an overtime and shootout, a 5-5 run-and-gun style prospects game. One of my favorites from back then. And unfortunately, another, you know, an injury leads to an opening of door. You know, a couple of years ago, Joseph Mizzy was yep. the MVP, and he was added to the game. And then we're going to talk about Jovanovic and Buchinger, the Marlies and Junior Canadians, respectively. They're defensemen that are not dressed tonight. They're trying to get better. Obviously, you know, this is a, a great game to be at, but if you're not healthy, you got to sit it out. Absolutely. Right? You can't put yourself. So having players step in, it's a regular occurrence. And you've heard the conversations, Bill, when we talk to the scouts. They're like, how do you get down to 40 when you start with the list of 55? Yes. There's going to be a wrong decision. Someone's going to tell you you're wrong whenever you come together and put together rosters like this. And that's the great thing, to have that kind of depth. That's a good problem to have. Yeah, I agree. As this one's fired into the zone. And, hey, you mentioned it too with the goalies. You can only take four, and there's 24 that you can pick from. So that's even harder. So great representation regardless. And Great action so far in this first period. It's a real interesting line for the team in white. It's got Delich, the Toronto Titans leading offensive player. He's with Lavoie from the Nats. Coach Paul Tamburo puts them out together. Coach Adelich, last year at the band in Triple A's was a monster. They were hosting the event, so you know you're gonna be in the, the event. But they represented well. They got to the semifinals of the GTHL. Then they had that time off waiting for the Junior Canadians and Marlies to get their game together. Went out to the Bantams, and Delich was absolutely a monster out there last year. And he's looked good so far here in this one. We still got plenty of action for our 11th GTHL Top Prospects game. I think I actually got it. Oh, here's a chance for an interception. Nice read and nice save there by Downey. Makes it look easy, calm and poised, uh, as that was Nicholas DeAngelis with the shot from the point. I was going to say, Pete, actually, I think you got it there. Timlick was a call-up in the first one we did together. That was the Strom Karostolev year. I believe Karostolev got the other MVP. And then in that second year, it was Mizzy, who was the one who had stepped in, scored the big tying goal that sent the uh, prospects game to 5-5 to overtime. That was a wild one. And, uh, you know, you get that call, and I guess you could be down about it, right? You know, you're missing out. And then you get that call, and you're like, you know what? I deserve to be there. That's what I was probably thinking in your head, you know, when the, the sex come out. The, the, the lames come out, so why not go out and say, I belong here, I know someone's got an injury, he's gonna represent himself when he's healthy, but I've got a job to do, impress everybody. That was one of the first bigger hits we've seen as Castle takes down his man. So, Aiden Castle goes to the box for the second time so far early on in this one with 5.45 to go in the first period. And another opportunity for Stacy Primo Tucker. Sometimes getting that power play early in a game, you still haven't really got your, yourself going. Now let's see what they can do 
with their second opportunity. You know, and Castle's right on the edge. When you look at his game in the regular season, he forechecks, he PKs, but he wins the battles along the boards. He's a strong player. Maybe you can look at that last one and say, ah, he didn't get all of him, but he's a strong kid. He's somebody that in the OHL, they're going to say, you need someone to fish the puck out of the quarter. you got to go out and get Castle on your team. I know George wants to get going here for Black. He is oh, George over skates at Vogelsberg, just shoots it wide. He's itching, partner. I mean, his game in the regular season is carrying that puck, and I don't know if he's just a little gun shy right now, but he's a fantastic offensive defenseman, a great skater. Just looks like he's in the middle gear right now, ready to kick it in. I mean, you know, attribute that a bit to Vogelsberg. He's in the back of their heads right now. He could come up at you from anywhere in the offensive or in the defensive zone when you're on the power play. As Andrade, now, oh, he just overskates that one. He had Vogelsberg with him. Now there's three light jerseys leading the attack, shorthanded. we got a minute and five to go, and they'll think better of it and get back now as the dark jerseys from Stacy Primo and Tucker lead the counterattack going the other way. It is best, best. Quick shot, nice stick there by Nelson. Two against two, and it's sent back to the point, but that puck was rolling on, on the point, really interesting. I don't know if he just ended up covering there. He's the... One of the better offensive players Ooh. in the loop, and you see that quiet little wrist shot aim down. He wasn't sure where it was going, but he was in the right spot to snag it. You mentioned that Austin Matthews maybe in a different light. That's more of something we see at the NHL level. That little move just gets the defender to move his skate or his stick, and that opens it up and allows you to get Changing that shot. Changing the angle of the yeah. shot. Eh? Everyone's used it. The shot of the big slap shot's done. Eh? Yeah. It's just go out there and do a sneaky little wrist shot. I'm sure you're still bombing them from the back end of men's league. I'm but. still not even hitting the net from the blue line, partner. <laughs> My teammates are totally safe when they're standing in front of the other team's goalie. I do not get it near that net. As the power play continues, 15 seconds, centering pass. Nice save again by Kyle Downey. What a job so far early on. As the second power play is almost up, another great chance for the dark jerseys. But setter off and his light jersey teammates, Bianconi, Coming back the other way. And it was enough to kill the clock. And now perhaps some offensive zone time coming up. No, that puck's lost at the blue line. Ludwis Ludvinsky, excuse me. He has it, puts on the brakes. He's got two players on him. Van Fleet takes him down. Centering pass there. Nobody home as it was set her off in a good position there. On the wraparound, stopped again. That was Simpson stopped on the wraparound. And now a little bit of momentum gained for... Team Stacy Primo and Tucker. And it results in an icing. So perhaps from that power play, they got a little bit more life in the offensive zone. It's kind of tilted both ways at times. We saw, you know, Clark Weaver Corson's team start off. They get the opening goal. They were hot. And then a couple of power plays have slowed down the light team offensively and gotten the dark team going here. Well, Downey's been busier net. We know that for sure. Stuska's made a couple big saves. Downey's had to make some big saves at real difficult times on the PK side of it. That number one penalty killer is always your goalie, right? So he knows what he's in for. And it's, it's interesting, partner, when you look at the box scores in the past years, not a lot of special teams. Because the players, yep. you know, going out, there's no rough play really. So already to have two power plays kind of throws everybody off on the bench because now you have four lines. Usually you got maybe nine forwards in a regular game. Yeah, good point. As Piccinino throws a hit there at Tatarenko right by the center ice dot. It's sent in now by Team Clark. Great little play by yeah. Leonard. Just a little pass on the backhand. Catches two four checkers going the other way. And it's an easy breakout. When Five Black has the puck for the reps, they're in good hands to get out of the zone. There's Lavoie, he loses that one. George, there you go. There's that quick outlet pass and the They're quick hands you were speaking They of. know George wants to get going, so he's going to see a heavy four check here. They're Number old. four from the black team, a star of the Marlies. He's a guy that everyone wants to reel in before he gets those legs going. Sermon there, and Delic got it going. Almost a turnover, but they now finally get into the zone to does Clark's team. Lavoie, Lavoie with the shot, that one just goes wide. Sermon chips it back in off the glass. And here's George one more time. Oh, heads up. He wants more ice time. Sent a message there to the coaching staff. Of course, Laura Stacy, you know, getting used to the fact 
Darcy Tucker coaches in the GTHL, so I this like is the, being on the bench. Is, he's I casually like the fedora. Dressed. Laura Stacy's got maybe, I don't know if you would know who John Brophy is, but Brophy had the fedora yes. for playoff time for the Leafs. Laura Stacy doing looks, it. It looks sharp. I mean, you look at her resume, and I'm sure Darcy Tucker's got the three Memorial Cups, and, and Primo's beside them saying, okay, uh, that bio had a nice gold medals, Memorial Cup, and all kinds of interesting ones, and I don't have any of those. <laughs> As Faccinelli was trying to get the puck out for Stacy's team. Here he is again. Faccinelli, far side. This one's fluttered in. And Clark's team in the light jerseys will make a play. Castle. Castle with speed through the neutral zone. Creates some space for himself. Nice job there, cutting through the middle. Pass attempt, or shot attempt there, was deflected into the corner. And now coming back the other way, Faccinelli. Here he is, he's got some room going blue line to blue line. And just looking to get an offensive zone draw there is the Markham Majors forward. Markham Majors with one representative with the Domino's Flyers having a couple, Red Wings with one. We got the reps with four. The Titans now end up with nine and the Junior Canadians who had nine end up with eight with the uh, injuries that we had spoken of. So. Uh, that's basically what we're looking at. Toronto Marlies with seven players in the game and the Toronto Young Nationals with six. So you mentioned it, Pete. Great depth. ton of players to choose from as we've got 45 seconds to go in this first period. And they're not uh, disappointing so far. Well, Facinelli from the Majors and Tedarenko from the Red Wings, the lone guys from their team, they're the offensive leaders on those teams. Yep. So they must look out here and say, okay, I've got some options here. I mean, Faccinelli plays a big game. He runs that Majors offense. Now he's, he can breathe a little bit. He's got some support. Here is Vogelsberg shot. That one just off the glove of Stushka. That's coming back the other way. Femis, partial break opportunity. Femis comes in and he sticked check nicely and calmly there by Matthew Morden. Again, Morden is- Big tree. Yeah. Matthew Morden, big tree. That's on my sheet when I looked at that scouting report. He didn't have to throw a big check or hook a stick. Femis, he like kind of reeled game. him in, right? Yeah. I've liked his game, though, defensively here in this first period. Sometimes it's all about people want to see that high-octane offense, but it's just as sweet to see a good shutdown defensive play, and that's what a lot of these scouts are looking for, too, you know? Absolutely. You can see Morden wasn't even in panic mode. Femis is a big, strong player, puts out the shoulder, and Morden, like we said, a big tree, puts that branch around him and cuts him off. So our first period of play is in the books at the 11th annual GTHL Top Prospects game. Powered by Under Armour, 1-0 lead. And that would be for Team Clark. Weaver, Corson, goal by Jake Setteroff, assists to Ty Nelson and Thomas Sermon. We're going to take a quick, quick break, but we'll be right back for a Bantam 3-on-3 three -three here at the GTHL Top Prospects game.
season last year in GTHL having another good one in the Bantam season here. But the two linesmen, they don't get the break here. Connor, Connor Laviolette and Glenn McKechnie, they have to stick it out here for an extra 10 minutes. I'm sure the guys with the best cardio, I'm sure. Would Absolutely. Take. A little extra work on their positioning. Have a little fun with the three on three. Here's Lalkin waiting for support. He's got Allen. Allen goes right back and just fanning on that one was Lalkin. Boy, boy, Costanzo's been the busier of the two goalies so far here. When you look down in the corner, siege. the players for the minor midget prospects game are all watching. Oh! A few of them played in last year's event and no whistles. Keep her going, seven minutes in, a 10 minute period. And even a little old school novice house league, change on the buzzer. That's the only way I'm comfortable playing. <laughs> Except there's no draw here. You actually have to do it on the fly. So you gotta be ready to hustle out there. Here's Morelli. Sends it in. Carroll goes after it. Briere looks to return that. Get the tunes pumping too while we're going. Briere makes a move. He still has it. Looking for an option. Sends that one across. Gets it right back. Ben Poitras. Poitras looking for it again. He's got a man on him. It's back to the point. Here's Briere. Top the slot. Shot. Blocker aside by Rizzo for the Junior Canadians. As now that was a big save from Antonio Rizzo. This has been the, big, the busiest of the two goaltenders, but looking sharp there. He's, that's a big, that's a big boy for a minute. Absolutely. But I think you've got some real competition here. Doug Ireland, the PA announcer, doing a little play-by-play -play every now and then. I think he wants the mic. Here's Lulkin with a chance. Costanzo may have gotten a piece on that one. Oh, we're having a blast here with this man for three on three. Hajiwara comes in for the Marlies. A chance for their first goal. Oh, on the rebound. He almost puts it home. Five and a half to go in this friendly three on three. Everybody's having some fun around the rink. Lulkin finds his man. Cross ice. Hope check attempt there by Costanzo. One thing to remember, partner, going into next year is we won't be able to say minor midget or bantam. Correct. Hockey Canada with the age change names as Lorenza comes in and tries to shove it over to Laukin. We're going to be going U12, U11. It's going to take a little while little to get, get used, used to, to, but it's the right thing here nationwide. Hockey Canada saying you've got to go with these new names. Well, it can't be any worse than our first broadcast maybe seven, eight years ago where I was calling uh, the Mississauga Senators lead for Ottawa Absolutely. at the break. About Ottawa Centers versus the Montreal Junior Canadiens. We had a couple <laughs> to start. And you did always teach me after that first broadcast, never show up without your tie. <laughs> so look where we've come. Well, right now, dark team's down by four. They need to get going here. It's not that they've taken more chances, just White has been pretty good at getting out of the zone here yeah. on the three. Here's an opportunity to break that goose egg. Poitras' shot attempt was deflected. Josh Brandt in the goaltender for the Junior Canadians. He wants a little work here. He's kind of coming out of his crease saying, okay, guys, give me something to do. So Brandt in at the five minute mark, enters the gameplay, and then uh, Nikitopoulos. Marley's and Junior the Canadians, the top two teams in the Bantam Loop. Both of their goalies are here. Nikitopoulos there behind the net. They center it, and it's time for a change. Hajiwara gets to it first. Fresh off a change on this near side. He has Terrence. Lalkin's on him. Terrence, oh, nice strong move protecting the puck. There, and a nice, even better save by Josh Brinton. Lorenza. Oh, Lorenza gets past Hajiwara. Lorenza has Terrence on him. Here's Allen. Allen poked off his stick by Hajiwara. Three and a half to go. It's a 4 nothing lead for the light colored jerseys. Because this is an all important game, they're just trying to run the clock here. 
make sure that they secure the victory. <laughs> Well, puck possession, right? I mean, this is what you learn to play in these small area games. Well, like you said, this is at the professional level. You got to be good at this to win some games. Here's Hadjuar on a breakaway looking to open it up. Oh, nice save. He tried the cheeky little soft touch on the backhand. Awesome. Even there. Great job by Branton to stick with that, not overcommit, and he gets his toe on that. A couple of nice saves by the JRC Tendi coming in cold. Halfway through the game. Coming in on the fly. When's the last time he made a change on a fly? So you can tell that for sure. And George Young has been all over the ice in this three-on-three three with another breakaway opportunity and another goal. Well, he's been on fire here in this three-on-three, three and we've got ourselves a big lead now for his squad. Carroll loses that one to him. Here's Briere, over skates it. And now Forgion has another chance. Oh, he's trying to get. He's pulling out every it. move, right? I love him. it, actually. Why not? He tried to through the legs. We tried to bounce up. There's a nice save again by Branton, the old knocking out of the air through the guy's legs. Forgion putting on the show. As Allen's waiting for his line mates to get out there, Hadjuara man is up on him. A couple of stick checks. <laughs> and Malkin. We got offsides in this? Absolutely. What Get is Jerry this? pick, partner. <laughs> oh, Branton by good. Branton. Yeah. And I do got to say, I like, love the match of pad. You know, and that, we're not love goalies, Walker. but I think the love big it. thing is now you go with white pads and the pros because it gives players the idea that there's open ice. <laughs> Again, you watch a game here at the youth level and everyone's like, hey, I want my fashion. I want my pads to match my uni, right? And I don't really, you tell me right now, NHL shooters get lulled in by white pads? I, something, I don't know. Is I, that like, I don't think I, don't think I grade 11 that. psychology <laughs> class right at work there? Oh, All right, there's one, Hadjuara, with one minute left in the three on three, breaks the goose egg. You know what, Branson almost caught to that one, so I kind of give him some credit. I might stick around and say, hey, you guys want me to play in the second or third period of the other game? Forgione. Forgione. He's like the guy online Tried when you're playing us. NHL online and you, you, you're playing against some guy from like Chile thinking, I'm going to beat this guy and he pulls out every little trick. Yeah. There he is with a centering pass, 15 seconds to go. Now in this three on three, little phantom all-star portion of our 11th annual GTHL top prospects game. Oh, maybe one last, look at Forgione. Getting on his horse there to get back defensively. Poitras with the last shot. Branton with the final save. The 6-1 victory for his GTHL light color jersey. Great showcase, a lot of fun for the band. Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the Scotiabank Pond. We're moments away from puck drop for the second period of our 11th annual GTHL Top Prospect Prospects game, powered by Under Armour. It's Bill G. It's Peter K. We're back quickly to talk a little bit about that first period. We got our light team. Wendell Clark's team, they're up by one on that goal by Setteroff. You know, good action and a lot for this crowd to see early on, but it's really the defensive side that was more a little impressive in that first period. Well, you're talking about speed, and we always say, you know, speed to score a goal. How about speed to shut down a goal? And you saw some of the defensemen, that word gap control. There's no gaps here, right? I mean, the defensemen are right on the forward because they're not scared because they're great skaters. Yeah, absolutely. And that great skating ability will be on display for this second period as we are ready for puck drop. It was the goal by Jake Setteroff of the Toronto Titans and the JRC at the back end. Nelson and Sermon with the apples, that's our lone goal. A couple of power plays for Team Stacy Primo. Tucker didn't amount to much as Kyle Downey. The backstop so far for uh, Clark's team. He's done a great job. We'll see if this team in black coached by Laura Stacy can get into it here. Ludwinski started, the Marley's captain. He's centering again with Haldenby. You see the lines are staying together in Simpson. 
There's a lot of offense on every line, so I mean, you can't say you don't have a goal score when you need one out there. A couple of players running into each other there as Miller sends it in down low. Here's Simpson. Again, Miller, Emerson Miller of the Titans was stepping in there for Michael Bushinger of the JRC and Matthew Jovanovic of the Toronto Marlies who are unable to play tonight. A couple of defensemen, so Miller is one of the replacements as is Stoikov. And the Marlies getting some love in the prospects game as they earned it by making the initial selection. Sermon now gets to that as he has a body on him. I believe that's Haldenby. Sermon and Haldenby battle in the corner. Bianconi supporting his defenseman in the back. Spins and they'll come out on the near side. We got the long change here in the second period. So perhaps that'll lead to some more scoring opportunities as Femis with a great pass right up from blue line to blue line. Moldenauer. He's got room, lots of room. Time and space was waiting for an option. He's a playmaker, but he needs to shoot every now and then, right? I mean, he's got a 10 goals this year in the regular season. Don't worry about the pretty play. You got that lane, take a shot. It's always funny, sometimes in the prospects game, even professional level, Pete, the all-star games, the first period's always maybe a little bit more loose. And then by the time we get to the third, we want to win. Both teams start going at it and simplify their games. Bonnie. And there is a goal right there by Bonayuto. What an individual effort. And he finds a way to sneak that one through Liam Shushka's five hole. And early in this second period, a little bit of insurance for Team Clark, Weaver, and Corson. Oh, he's a PK stud. He's a big body. And he's 11 goals into this regular season by sticking out that shoulder and making sure you're not going to get near the puck. A little hand eye, almost balanced the puck with one hand on his stick, able to get that defender off and make it a 2 nothing game. Nice job there by the Toronto Marlies forward. Marlies sitting second place right now in the minor midget standings with 32 points. They're three back of the JRC. How about the Toronto Marlies? 8-1-1 one one in their last 10. So these are players who have been riding a hot streak coming into this one. And so have the JRC. We'll talk more about them after. But Pete, the Toronto Marlies, as there's a chance on the short side for Faccinelli. And it's stopped by Downey again, just positioned perfectly. But going back to that, the Toronto Marlies, 8-1-1. One one. You mentioned sometimes those years you have the dynasty team or the big juggernaut. We have the JRC who are 17-1-1. One one. Great video game-like numbers. But the Toronto Marlies, even though a couple games in hand for the JRC, you know, they're a winning streak away or a win over the JRC from potentially coming up, and as are the Toronto Young Nationals. So the JRC are having quite the year, but these teams are still right on their heels. It's amazing to the be 17-1-1 one and, one and still see people behind you, right? Chasing yeah. you down for first place. And we had last year the Don Mills Flyers and Shane Wright and that great team with Brendan Othman and Akuris and, and all mysteries. And all of a sudden you come to this year where the top three, it's a battle. You can't take a night off. And even the four, five, six, and Devlin now gets one. Okay, we talked about the second period. Maybe we get a little more offense with the change there. That was just some nice passing. And Devlin, the recipient of that, it's a quick shot. He didn't take a lot of time there to get that one off and he finds a way to beat Downey low on that glove side. Luke Devlin is the ultimate support player there. You look up and you need a little help, he's on the board. You need a little help on the four check, he's there. And a great response by Jordan Carafile centering that line, the young Nats center, the playmaker, along with Faccinelli, the lone marker there from the Mike Mark and Majors. They had a strong shift, a good putback shift for this team in black to make it two to one. And look at Piccinino trying to keep that momentum going as now we've seen the dark jerseys with a little bit more life. We thought maybe that would tail off after they went down by two, but almost that second goal for Clark's team has invigorated uh, Stacy's team. Well, it was textbook what you got on the scouting report. Kara files a playmaker. He's all over the place. Faccinelli makes some space, and Devlin seems to always be there in the right spot at the right time. I know it's not flashy to say ultimate support, but that's what he does when he's out there for the Marlies. It looks as though the net came off the moorings there. So we'll have a little stoppage in play. So, just to get caught up, it was Lorenzo Bonayuto for the Toronto Marlies. Made it 2 0 for Clark's team. But shortly after, Luke Devlin it gets Team Stacy on the board. So now they trail by one again. And we got Levinsky from the Toronto Marlies out there with 
His line mates Halden B and Simpson. Leonard gets back. No icing on the call. They continue. Leonard behind the goal line. Ships that one forward. Ah, here come the dark jerseys one more time. It was just behind Ledwinski, so perhaps a chance for the Clark's team to take advantage. They cannot, and it's sent back in behind Kyle Downey. Comes back out the other end and out of the zone. Ledwinski there, support, supporting his defenseman who had chipped in to try and keep the play alive. And here's a great outlet pass. A chance now, Haldenby to Simpson. Oh, Simpson the toe drag and doesn't miss by much on that. What would have been a highlight reel goal starting from an outlet point at Alec the top Leonard. of the circle. Alec Leonard from the reps, they're having a great season defensively. He started with a great pass. Here's Simpson, DeAngelis tried to sneak in there as all the attention was on Lidwinski. Nice patience there by Simpson to try and find the trailer. There's the long shift now for the team in black. They want to get out there for the tying goal, but White's been able to make a change here. Leonard's got this puck possession. He's got two on him. Two four checkers in the top prospects game. You know you're in trouble. Oh, and that one just through the legs of Moldenauer. That goal really has brought new life here to Team Stacy, but a turnover at the blue line by Fimis. Here's Lavoie. Lavoie comes in. Lavoie with the shot. That one stopped. Great job by Best on the back check. You gotta give some credit there to the defenseman. That looked like a clear cut breakaway, but he at least got a little bit in there. A stick in the legs around the stick to maybe he's, not make it the chance that Lavoie initially wanted. He's a right spot at the right time defender. Knows when to jump in. I like the fact he didn't come close to taking a penalty there. Nope. It put enough pressure on the on Lavoie, who's a phenomenal goal scorer. Stuska still had to make a big save, but he had a little bit of time to react to it. Van Fleet tries to get it through all the legs and sticks, but it deflects wide and behind Stuska. And now a little bit of momentum and offensive pressure coming back the other way for Clark's team. As Delic to Bonayuto. He scored the second goal. And it was the for Team Clark here in this period as Ramsey with a cheeky little move to get past uh, four checker. Here's a tape to tape pass, blue line to blue line. Here's Loshing with the shot, ooh! And getting a piece of that was Downey. And I'm not sure he knew where that ended up, but it ended up at least not in the back of his Lashing net. Loshing is an elite offensive player for Speedy. the Mississauga Senators. They're a team that relies on their great defensive play. Loshing's been able to carry them with his nine goals and five assists in 15 games. And you saw another wicked little wrist shot. It's no Quick more release. big slap yeah. shot. The release changing the point where that puck comes off your stick. There it is again. And that's Facinelli with this line that has put the black team on board there. Coach Paltenborough with the Nats. He knows what he has in Carafile. I like the fact you get the United Nations here, eh? Five guys from five different teams, yep. and they get something going here. It's awesome. I even like the uh, chit chat after every face off. A on little what huddle. We're do. Yeah, a maybe little we'll basketball set a little play. style huddle, yeah. you know, before a free throw. I like it. Why doesn't hockey have a little huddle before a face off? Not sure. It's a good point. Maybe you can introduce that. As Mir gets this one out, Devlin runs over his man. So scores a goal, throws a nice hit. Here's George on the near side. He just wants to get going even yes, if it's backwards, yes. you can tell. He wants to go for a skate and you can tell that Clark's team does not want to give him an opportunity to do that. There's a hit by Facinelli. So he's back out there after a good scoring chance not long ago off the faceoff. Now he's applying that four check with a good hit. And coming back now is Team Clark. Four on, five on two, oh boy. Five on two. <laughs> How many times have we set up five on two? That was an odd change, to put it best. That could have led to a better chance. Maybe they'll get one here, but five on two, they didn't really get much out of that. Got to give credit to uh, Stacy's defenseman and goaltenders. Here's one just sent right up the metal, middle. Intercent, easily picked aside. Sebastian there with the chance and he doesn't get that one through. So George tried to flick it through the air and it's his teammate Sebastian who reads that as Pichinot comes in front here. Here's another chance in front of the net. Pardon me. Teammate to teammate interceptions coming back the other way. Pichinino with a chance but his hard work and drive to the net will get his team a power play and it is their first power play of the game and a chance now maybe to even things up. Well, we know this team coached by Lawrence. Their third turn. power play. I had it yep. going the other way. We had to change our sheets around there. 0 for 2 going with their third power play. 
DeAngelis is out there with Leonard, two defensemen that have really an offensive ability to get the puck on net. And you look at Sagan out there, he's got a likely idea that, well, now he's covering for Leonard, but he's got two defensemen that would be very accurate their shots. And there's Stushka. Clearing that one, almost a chance coming back. By the way, you look down for one second, you look up, they're at the other end of the ice, scoring chances at either end. There's Leonard, fans on the initial attempt. Piccinino has it. Hey, it was his hard work that led into the power play, so he's rewarded with some time on the power play. Here he is now, Piccinino recovers there. That puck was almost quick to get intercepted. There's a pass there, kind of into traffic. Not much you can do with it for Team Stacy, but DeAngelis with a great job there not to give up. Good individual effort, one-on-one -on -one battle. It'll lead to a shot there, and Nelson with the block. There's Leonard coming in with a big rip and he'll inadvertently do his team, the opposition, sorry, a favor as that one clears his own. Now Leonard fans on that one. Here's a chance for Andrade. He gets the pass across, gets it delivered back down low. Andrade again, now look at this effort. Sticklift gets it back, stays onside. He might be running out of gas soon, but you gotta like what you see there. I've always been a fan of that. And here is Ledvinsky with Haldenby. Ledvinsky goes for the shot. Another great play by Nelson. Oh boy, I talked about the best hair in the prospects game. Well, he's made some incredible defensive plays he's in been, the last little he's bit. He's been willing to put his body out there. And you talk about the work Aaron Andrade was doing. He's a guy, he's a yardage game kind of guy. He wins battles. And you look up and you think, oh, he's probably a, a defensive kind of guy. He's got 13 goals and you just saw what he was doing on the PK. That's dedication to getting the job done. One of the standout defensemen from the Junior Canadians, as we are now five on five once again. So, 0 for three now. Our team Stacy on the power play. Simpson, they're still down by a goal with 10.45 to go in this second period. Ledvinsky, back to the point. Here's a chance for Holden being swiping at that one was Downey. And the dark jerseys here pressing again. They almost look like they're playing with more confidence, they're five inspired. on five. Faster, pa quicker passes with some velocity. Yeah. No slow passes now. Absolutely. Ledvinsky with the shot, looking short side, top corner, but positionally sound. I guess. He doesn't move. I think he's as tall as I am when he's down in the butterfly. Uh, he does not move. You look up and now we're gonna see them leave a little early, usually that 10 minute mark, but yeah. Great goaltending display at both ends. It looks like Team White with Paul Damporo, they're gonna make their goalie change. And I thought they might do it on different whistles, but we're gonna have our two new goaltenders in here. So, for the light jerseys on Team Clark Weaver Corso, we're getting Dominic DiVincentis from the Vaughn Kings. Going the other way is Adam Ricci from the Reps Hockey Club in the dark jersey. So they step in now, a great job by both Downey and Stushka. And it was weird, it almost went, you're gonna be busy, now you're gonna be busy for a bit. And they were trading chances, but both goalies doing a nice job. You know, very impressed, as you said, with how downy, how positionally sound he was. And Stushka did just a great job there of battling. He kept battling. He a loves, he loves, he loves being active in the game. And you look at these two goaltenders here, Adam Ricci, he can fight through traffic. At the other end, David Census from the Vaughn Kings, he's the ultimate puck tracker in this age group. So. Watch those skills on display. A little bit different than what you saw with Downey and Stuska, and this makes it fun. Four different goalies, a little bit different style. Here's the first shot on net there uh, against Ricci. Makes an easy save. That's, you always want a no couple easy ones. Right? He yeah. hasn't warmed up now for you know almost two hours when you look at the player announcements. Here's a cross-ice feed for Loshing. Nice pass there. Loshing tries to make a play. Oh, boy. And that's a big collision. Caden Mir, the Toronto Marlboro, he oh boy, cut I him off there now. I don't know if there was a collision on the post it's there. It's Steven Chentis that I'm worried about. He seems to be the one who's took it. Well, the trainers are here. Jeez, so at one end, you get an easy little shot short side that, you know, Ricci can steer away coming back the other one. And it's just unfortunate we see Steven Chentis. I mean, not much he could do there. He was playing the he puck, holding, playing the shot, yeah, holding, spot. His, yeah, holding his spot positionally sound. And what do you do when you have two players coming at you full speed? I uh, just, right now, we're just hoping that everything's okay and he can stay in this game. I mean, we look at some of the goaltenders. I was trying to do my uh, prospects trivia there, Pete. 
And thinking about there was one goalie, I believe, who had made it to two prospects game. And if I'm not mistaken, that was Jack Lafontaine. The underager, yep. The under he went in as an underager. I, I was trying to think of our guys who had been in for more than one. So oh, I remember Lafontaine. Absolutely. Jack Hughes. Jack Hughes. Jack Hughes had a couple. There's been a few that had Merkley, the opportunity. Merkley, play, make Merkley that? played in two as yep, well. Yep. And you look at some of the big goaltenders we've had. Jeremy Helvig, Jake Patterson, some, some big goalies that were still very good athletes. They weren't just out there. So the luxury here with the fact that Dominic DiVincenzis is kind of up on that knee is if he needs a little breather, Kyle Downey's on the ice. He's warm. He's stretching it out here. And you got to go in the player's ear when you're the trainer, Kyle Bachorsk, and say, this is a big game. You want to impress. But if you need to come off, you come off, just like we talked about with the injuries. So I hope it's... And I hope it's an equipment thing right now is the reason why he had to go down there because I, you hate to see a guy try to play through this. It was a high-speed collision oh, here. Oh, big so, time. Yeah. I mean, you can get him on the bench and say, let's walk a little bit on the side there. So. Dominic's a tougher guy than I am, I'll tell you that much. And it looks like he will be coming out. So an unfortunate turn of events. His first play when he comes into the game for Dominic DiVincentis, and he'll be taken out so for the most part it looks like it's Kyle Downey's game tonight for uh, and he'll get 10 to 2 on the bench there and, and we'll see where if he's able to come back and he's had a phenomenal year now he's put some weight on it he's skating a little bit there in front of the bench area he wants to see if he can make just get comfortable out there and loosen it up here but like I said scouting report amazing puck tracker finds the puck obviously everyone's very good at kicking out pucks and glove hands but that's his special skill. He's gonna get 10 to two on the bench and down he comes back into the blue crease. Well, we hope everything will be okay. We'd love to see him back in this game, but it's nothing serious. And he'll have, he'll continue the successful season. He's already started. Here's Loshing now coming back the other way. So Downey's back in. I mean, he's still relatively warm. So he'll take, he'll man the reins as Lavoie chips it by Miller and he pursues that puck. Here is Lavoie, he loses that there. Good stick by Miller. Now here's George. George gets some ability to send that long outlet pass that's intercepted easily by Mir. Good job by the defenseman out there right now. Mir and Van Fleet are both stepping up and not allowing that sort of high top of the circle pass to almost your own blue line. We've seen a lot of stretch passes from the dark jersey. So perhaps some adjustments being made defensively. As here's Delic. Oh, nice little move by Delic. Oh, and the return feed was there. Van Fleet. Oh, that one's blocked out of the air, Lavoie. How did that not go in? I think a player knocked that out of the air with his stick. Unbelievable. Nelson now, Bonayuto. I have no idea how that doesn't go in the back of the net. Great job by Ricci to get out now and poke that one away. Unbelievable sequence. That's the action we were looking for. Here's Leonard with the shot the other way, and that stopped by Downey. My Leonard. goodness, what happened there? How did that not go in? It looked like a player, it got knocked looked out like of the Leonard. air. like Leonard. Leonard was behind the goaltender as well. But I love the see. fact that they just bounced, bounced, oh. bounced. Looked like a player from Clark's team though, knocked it out of the air to send it to the net, and it was knocked out of the air again. And the crowd behind the there, net. I mean, we've got a full oh, rink. Oh, oh. Everyone is along the glass here. You had 20 goal judges ready to tap that button. Didn't come Unbelievable. close to the line. Oh, boy. They might get a chance now, four on one, pass across, and a great job though by Stacy's team to get back on the back check and turn it from a four on one and to even it out. But that's the second time we've seen now a four on one and a five on two, and it's almost players going, we're not sure what to do here. This never happens. You could get a little miscommunication with the fact if a D goes for a rush, the forwards aren't sure how to call Correct. out and covering. And Correct. You, you kind of get that, but it, does a, it adds a little to the excitement of the game. Hewley. Loses his footing there. Sebastian enters the zone just offside. Wow, crazy sequence, crazy action. Still a two to one lead for Team Clark. Weaver Corson behind goals by Setteroff and Bonayuto. The lone goal for Team Stacy Primo. Tucker coming off the stick of Devlin. And that's where we sit right now with 7.40 to go in this second period. Now the Darks coming back the other way. DeAngelis, good feed just 
Offside as there are three of them entering the zone with speed. There's another one of those outlet passes from blue line to blue line. De Angelis is a great defender and you oh, what I call it, he's got a safe first pass. You know you can start heading up ice, he's gonna pick a spot, won't force it, and he ends up making an outlet pass to Alec Leonard. His deep partner wanted in on that four on three rush and they were just caught up on the blue line. How valuable now is that defenseman, that fourth forward at times, the trailer, the one who enters the rush or can lead a rush now, while still being defensively responsible, but we see it at the NHL level, every team wants to Everyone's have that Everyone's looking for that defensemen. defenseman that'll join absolutely, the attack. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's the skill that the big guys had. They used to be able to take a stick and hit someone over the head to clear the front of it. You can't do that now, so what can you do? You have to learn to make great passes to get the puck out. It's not off the glass. Our hometown Toronto Maple Leafs, they want puck possession. They don't even want to dump yep. it in now. They want to yep. turn around as Divincenzis tries to squeeze in a little bit of a skate, and where he can even get that second intermission and come to the third, that They'd would love, be a good story. Absolutely, but love of course, the regular the season's a priority. Is Vaughn Kings right now sitting in sixth place, and they're tied actually with the Reps Hockey Club for fifth. So, and they're you know not far off from the Toronto Titans, three points back of fourth. So they're right now in that conversation. You mentioned that other bunch, the four, five, six. We got the one, two, three, and the four, five, six are all kind of nipping at each other's heels. You know, and, and you look at who's in the top three is Dee Vincensis is coming in. He's, He's going to get in. a big cheer. All right. That is awesome. Nice job by Downey in relief there. He starts the game, comes in in relief, and we've got Dominic Dee It's like now. we're scripting the drama here, right? Love Off, it. injured, season ending. Miraculous recovery back in the net. <laughs> and that has to be a first for us, right? We haven't had injuries in these 11 no. prospects games, let alone the goaltender. Not the goaltender. That's the first time I've seen that. So. Either way, we're happy to see him back in the net for Team Clark. And now his boys are trying to add some more insurance as they've got that one goal lead. Bianconi, he's had a nice game himself. Makes a nice move to the outside. Peels back, down on both knees. He tries to send it back low and continue the cycle. Here is Simpson though, off the half wall to Haldenby. Haldenby hits center ice, tries to chip it by Van Fleet. Nice read by Van Fleet to turn around there and pivot and get back skating forward to not allow himself to get beat. Back to the point, Stoikov from the Don Mills Flowers. And there you go, De Vincentis. Uh, that's the kind of save he wants to be making, not the first one that he had coming at him with two players full steam. So he, looking sharp. He tested it out, he feels good. and. How about the play of Van Fleet? You can see why the Junior Canadians have that 17-1-1 record oh. partner. When you look at the defense score, you've talked about Sermon and Nelson. Van Fleet's in there having a phenomenal season. And Fimis, speaking of the JRC, spins, fires, top corner, scores, and we got ourselves a tie game. What a shot. And you know, he's one of the offensive weapons on this Junior Canadian team. We keep talking about the defense because year in and year out, we just see the JRC pump out amazing defenders. But that shot right there, that's what it's all about. Top corner blocker side. Big release here. And when you've got that offensive title on your name, you want to go out there in a big game. And you can see he was kind of fighting the puck. He got taken down on that one breakaway. And all of a sudden now, as poor coach Aaron Sellen he takes one in the ribs there. Great shot there again, and we're tied. We're back to square one here with 5.45 to go in the second period. You were talking about drama and storylines. Well, this game, the action and intensity has certainly picked up in this second period. And how about we talk about Pano has made it easy on everyone. Why aren't we going with Panayoti, which of course is Peter and Greek Bill. You could call that any day of the week if you oh, want it. Oh boy, don't do as that to Pano, me, <laughs> As Pano has shortened it down just for his teammates probably. You know what, it's easier to create, scream out Pano instead of Panayoti when you need the puck. <laughs> And here is Fimis, and his shot that time gets blocked. And you can see he's got, he has one of those wicked releases. We keep talking about the quickness of his shot, and well, that's what led to that tying goal. And in fact, you mentioned it, and I've been waiting a little bit because of the JRC. This season, 17-1-1. They haven't, their last loss in regulation, September 16th. We are now in December. This is the kind of season they're having as Faccinelli shoots that one wide. On a current 11 game winning streak, Pete, they're doing it both ways. 42 goals scored, 10 goals against in 11 games. 
five shutout wins, like everything, goaltending. And defense. Adam Fantilli was started the season with him. He was an underager last year, decided he wanted to play with some hockey with his brother, highly regarded in this age group. He was going to be on this team. How demoralizing it could have been. They've dealt with injuries as well. So the only change now is the junior Canadians won't be playing in the Marlies Winter Tournament simply to get a break because yep. of all the hockey they've had and some bad injury luck. It's a lot, though, in this, this year. I mean, Buchinger is out. He was out just the day before the practice. Silver Stick got injured. He's Mr. Reliable Pass there. He's another defenseman on the junior Canadians. So that break might be real instrumental to them holding on to that first place championship. Remember, these guys are 15 and training like the pros, eating like the pros, working out like the pros. I mean, I don't know whether they have time for school and dating and video games. Does that still happen? You know, they all came in last night. It was funny having guys say, man, this is a late night for me. And I'm looking thinking it's nine o'clock. And he's saying, yeah, usually on a weeknight, I'm getting myself to bed because I've got to stay on the schedule. So they make the, the dedication to try and train for this year. Absolutely. Here's Mir with a shot. That one's blocked. And now a chance for Devlin. He drops that one there, looking for support and for a change. Facinelli, he's got Castle all over him. Strips him of the puck, but in support there is Sagan. Facinelli takes a bump from Van Fleet. Andrade. Here he comes, one on two. A little through the stick action there. Looking for support. Mir's calling out, saying he's back there. Also to note about the JRC, I mentioned that role they've been on. They're at a league best 1.26 goals against per game. So, unbelievable job by the coaching staff there and the whole team. DeAngelis, Sagan, Vogelsberg. He's been active everywhere the puck is. He seems to find him tonight. Here comes back to the point, DeAngelis. Cross ice, shot. That one's blocked by Mir. Good job to get in front of that one. He sends it back though, and it's Sagan who retrieves it for the other team. Here's a chance. Ursa Marzo trying to set up his teammate. Gets the puck back now. Does the Toronto Young Matt Nats forward and it's out. Leonard has a man on him. Leonard peeling but stays in the neutral zone. Finally gets it through to Sagan who will dump it in and set her off who has one of the goals will leave it there. So quick, quick shifts. Great action right now. Just high intense game so far. Here it is. DeAngelis loses the puck. Mir with a little move and he'll set this one out in just kind of a discombobulated shift as I struggled to put a sentence together uh, over that last sequence. I forgot how to speak English. Uh, great job there but they got themselves out of trouble and they'll take it out and unfortunately it looks like Di Vincentis is out again so he this tried is probably... It. He tried it. You know what though? That's maturity to say, hey, I want to be in this game, but maybe it's the best for the future of our season as a team. I, I take the rest of the night off maybe, and Downey can come in and step in. And you know what, you get selected for the game, and you know how deep the goaltender pool has been this year in this loop. Doesn't take away from the season he's having. He wants to get healthy and give credit. Like you said, he knows, okay, I gave it a shot yep. here. It felt good to get a cheer when I got back in, but I'm gonna get back on the bench, absolutely. For a 15 year old at this age to be in this kind of spotlight and say, hey, I'm gonna think about my team first, worry about the season. But like you mentioned, Pete, a lot to like about his goaltending. So we got a minute and 50 to go. We are tied at two. That outlet pass finds nobody in between Stoikov and Vest, so we'll come back 200 feet and the other way for an offensive zone draw for Team Stacy, who, again, they've had the three power plays. That's when they've been sort of not really functioning at their greatest. Five on five, though, in this last 20. They've turned it around completely. White's been under siege here. First it was set her off with Vogelsberg putting a lot of heat on everybody. Now it's kind of gone the other way around as White's struggling to get out of the zone here. Big time. And there's a fortuitous bounce. Tatarenko is the recipient of that. Oh, he tries a little through the move. Leg on the defender, drops it for Nelson. And a nice save by Ricci. Some nice moves on display there by Tatarenko. One on one, showing a little bit of that creativity. Well, the coaches are doing a good job here. Paul Tamburo working on the white team. John Wynn, Stanley the Black. The shifts get a little shorter at the end of the second period. Even with four lines here, you're playing a 20 minute period. Just the mental aspect. So keep them short, get everyone ready, keep them engaged in the game. There's Sermon gets a shot through. Stopped by Ricci. This 
one's played high and it goes off the top of the bench there and out of play. So we'll slow things down with one minute and 17 seconds to go in this second period. We only had the lone goal in the first. That was Sederoff. And we've had three here in this period. Now Devlin and Fimis for Team Stacy, which tied it up, but the lone goal for Team Clark was off the stick of Bonayuto from the Toronto Marlies. So Bonayuto made it 2-0, and it's been two unanswered goals for Team Stacy that have got them back in this one. And we kind of pointed out how when they went down 2-0, as we've got a minute to go in this period, and another stop by Ricci, that they almost woke up when they went down 2-0, and now it's 2-2, so their hard work has paid off in this instance. It was just one line after the other, right? Yep. Watch somebody work hard, then all of a sudden you come back, okay, I gotta match that. And that's good old fashioned work at the Canada and our Hockey Canada programs. We try to win world championships now with skill, but that work ethics, that little gotta extra, you know, we can't intimidate anymore. So you gotta outwork your opponents. Because they just laugh at you now. You can't punch people in the nose and get away with it. So that work ethic is the what best. these players are looking for, right? Yep. And those scouts are looking for that work ethic every game. It's tough to do. It's easy to show up tonight and have work ethic, but can you do it all season long? No kidding, especially as Sebastian's shot gets stopped. Oh, and out of the air, another one. That was Castle, but that one went wide with 25 seconds to go. Especially, you mentioned with the schedule and how much hockey these guys are playing in this year. Oh, nice save on the deflection. Great deflection there by Puley, but just to stick with it by Ricci and not give up on that puck as that one whoop, bounces up. We've had some weird puck bouncing on that end of the ice. I'm not sure if it's been tilted a little bit, but after that one crazy sequence midway through this frame, as we'll have one final face-off to close out this second period. Well, you see how Adam Ricci's always trying to fight through that better view. He's not comfortable. Always wants to find the best way that I can see the puck there, and it came in handy with the save like that as they're 3.6 on the clock and Sebastian in that big reach. He's looking to pull it over to Castle. Castle gets to it, but with not enough time and dark jerseys all around him. So we had three goals combined in the second period and that leaves us tied at two as both Team Clark Weaver and Corson, Team Stacy Primo and Tucker, and Team Janopoulos and Curtis were all gonna take a break. And we'll be back to chat about what went down in that second period and we look forward to what's going to be an awesome finish for what's been an epic 11th annual GTHL Top Prospects game powered by Under Armour. We'll be back in a bit. Hello again and welcome back to the Scotiabank Pond. We're in for a finish. It's Bill Janopoulos, it's Peter Curtis, it's 2-2 for our 11th annual GTHL. Talk a little bit in that first intermission break about the defensive game. Second period, the fans got that action, that excitement. We had end-to-end -end offense. And you know what, a lot of the times it was a hard back check that led to some of those odd man rushes the other way. We had three goals, and now we're tied at two for a big finish ahead. Well, those transition plays, right? You not only cut somebody down as they're crossing your blue line, you turn it back, they're tired, they can't back check, and it's great to see this 2-2 game. I've got the shots on goal over 25 for each team, and it's hard to keep track when it's just you and I, but a lot of scoring opportunities and the goaltenders have been very good. And as we go back to center ice now, Pete, we also talked about first period, okay, we could say Team Clark advantage, second period, maybe Team Stacy. So we've got a fun third period ahead. It's it's funny watching these changes in the momentum as everybody always uses that term now so loosely, but the momentum really switched when they were down to nothing. Well, that you can see a little bit of a switch turn up here as we're kind of waiting for Wendell Clark to get on the bench there. Too much socializing with Shane Corson. See the stop though? Good thing, yeah. <laughs> Sliding Coach Paul Tamburo from the Nats is saying, hey, if you guys want to just socialize, you can, but I'll run the bench here. As the guys have fun, Mike Weaver coaches in the league as well. So it's great when the, the NHL players show up on the bench and they're in hockey dad mode. It's kind of hard <laughs> to fan them, but yeah, they've got families and they get themselves in the rink and pull up the clipboard. Mike Weaver coaching Pee Wee Double A. Darcy Tucker's on the AAA side as well. So fun times for these guys at the rink. Absolutely. Here's Facinelli now coming back the other way for Team Stacy as this one sticked aside by 
Downey. So it looks as though Downey will stay in there for the rest of the game. As if you're just joining us, Steven Chentis. I went down with a bit of an injury, so playing it safe and staying out as Carafile sends it down low for Facinelli. Oh, nice little passing, and just out of the reach of Devlin, who's usually he's in that right spot. It was just ahead of him on that occasion. As now it's Team Clark scrambling to get out of their end. Good read there by the defenseman to keep the play alive. Still has it across. Great read by Downey. He saw the pass coming, and he pushed from one pad to the other end of his post to post and he made a nice save but again that for most goalies they're sprawling like Dominic Hashi. I'm not sure if I'm dating myself but he just slid across calm and cool. He knew exactly where he needed to be didn't over pursue it on the post and we talked a lot about the junior Canadians but they are being pushed hard by the Marlies and Nats. The Nats are led by Kyle Downey. I know they've got some other great stars you've seen Alec Leonard out here in Vogelsberg but Downey is the backbone for, backbone for this Toronto Young Nationals team. As the reps goals against is pretty low as well with Adam Ricci. So you got two very good goaltenders there, but the Marlies, Nats, and now where are the Toronto Titans gonna end up, Bill? Are they gonna end up in that top three? Are they comfortable being in the middle? Cause they are last year's Bantam AAA champions. They've got game and they just need to decide now, are they gonna make a run at the top three or are they going to kind of hang back in the fourth and work on their game? And most teams are in that 10 to 12 games left ratio, so there is still a lot of movement that could happen with how congested certain parts are in that in the standings. As this one's sent back, and Morden will step up. Head up. Enters the zone. Shot. May have gotten a piece of the blocker and reaching. Tatarenko with a nice move again earlier. He's been showcasing a little bit of that skill as he inadvertently takes a stick there from Sermon up high. His own teammate, so play resumes. Here's Best. Best up the middle, intercepted. On the back end here, Bayless. Bayless centers it. Bit of a scramble. Here's Sermon. Oh, he found a way to get that through, and on the rebound, Tatarenko gives Team Clark the lead. And again, we talk about Sermon being out there and everything he's done. I have no idea how he got that puck through. We had the perfect vantage point and it looked like a dark jersey and two legs were closed right in front of him where he's about to shoot and he gets it through. Smart shot, aims for the pads and on the rebound, can't make a mistake there. And it all starts with Bayless, the reps player. A little stop, change of direction, keeps the puck in. Sermon precise with where he wants the puck, the rebound and the white team led by Coach Wendell Clark here, another former GTHL hockey dad as That's well. Right. From right. his days, I've got the three to two lead. Well, let's see how Team Stacy responds. They seem to get life anytime they fall behind on the scoreboard. There's a shot there by Miller that gets through, but now it's three on two coming back for Clark. Lavoie sends it in. Ricci will poke it aside. Now it's back to the point here. Can't get a stick on that one. And now Delic, Delic with Miller on him. Good stick by Miller. Somehow Delic avoids losing the puck, gets it to Lavoie, whose shot does not get through. Here's Haldenby. Haldenby. And Ledbinski gets a shot through. There's a big rebound. Oh, coming back the other way. Lavoie, Lavoie, all alone. George is chasing him down. Here's Lavoie on the backhand, score! in this third period and he made no mistake on that finish but uh everybody on team stacy got trapped on one third of the ice and he started that breakaway from almost his own blue line a little over the top and trying to get that tying goal but sac lavois shows you why the toronto young nationals are chasing down those junior canadians he's the ultimate goal scorer he's got downey on the ice with him now for almost the whole game he probably thinks he can cheat a little bit more knowing how great the goaltending is. Here's Loshik back the other way. Nice block by Nelson. My goodness. Just like that. Team Stacy's learning to at least put a dent in that deficit. It's almost like a replay of what happened before. They're down by two. And here they come again. Leonard tries the move. He can't get that. That loose puck is kicked out. Trying to keep that in is Loshik. He's showing his speed in this game. Ramsey goes far side, and it's out. Here's Castle, another opportunity here for Team Clark. Castle with Sebastian, all alone, Sebastian! 
scores! And they've opened up the floodgates now. Team Clark, with three goals in less than five minutes, have put themselves ahead, five to two. Sebastian, one of those long stick guys, you get out there, he four checks, makes it really difficult to get offense going. He's been rewarded. And let's be honest, partner, the team in black's been pushing for a goal. They're leaving their goaltender out there a little bit, yeah. all on his own. Adam Ricci, he's looking at breakaways, two on ones. I know you want to get in now. It's 15.45 to go now. Maybe you could have cheated, but you're up down by three. They've got to stick to a little bit of a game plan in their defensive zone. Absolutely, yeah. The cheating a little bit has cost them. As you called it, down by three. Here's Devlin, though. And Faccinelli's one-timer gets loved aside easily by Kyle Downey. You no, know, I was looking through the alumni of the GTHL. Now, the prospects game didn't necessarily exist, Pete, but we had guys like Tyler Sagan, P.K. Super, Jeff Skinner. John Tavares, the yep. captain now of the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's going way back. Petrangelo. How about O'Reilly, our Conn Smythe winner from last year? So it's just been amazing to see the names and follow the careers of all the players. Not all of them are going pro, but you look more recently. We talked about Marner, McDavid, Shikra, Metes. Here's Sermon with a chance. That's a nice club by Ricci. But some of the guys, Pete, from doing this loop for five years with you, I made a little list of a few of the guys. That might not be pro yet, but I always love my two-way guys who provided offense, but are also leaders. So here's my list of a few guys, okay? Akil Thomas, former Toronto Marlin. Big goal to win the championship. Travis Barrett. Two-way guy, Jonathan Taze-like. Absolutely. Cody Morgan, another JRC. Yeah, two-way kind of guy. Can I say Jonathan Taze for both of them? Uh, Brett Newman, Don Mills Flyers. Yeah, absolutely. Played there with Tortora and Levin. Uh, Levin, who was the first overall pick. And then finally, and there's lots more, but I just thought of this for a couple days ago. Uh, ben Jones, another Toronto Marlin. Physical guy. Physical, Physical two-way. See, get an idea of the kind of players I like. Yeah, and if you get on the GTHLCanada.com website, you can see a story there about the top 10. You've got your Connor McDavid, yep. Tom Wilson, who won a uh, Stanley Cup championship. I couldn't go Connor I know, McDavid. absolutely. And if we can put it in perspective, World Junior Camp's taking place. A couple guys, well, more than a couple guys who played in the G7 guys. Liam Foody, Cole Perfetti, Akil Thomas, you touched, Kevin Ball, Jamie big. Drysdale. You talk about the big Thomas Harley, defenseman, Kevin Ball. And, and Hunter Thomas. Jones, who came and played for the reps, Adam Ricci's team. Had that great season, coached by his dad on the bench there. He looks like he's a stud to and make this team. I'll never forget Ball there on the back end for the Marlies that year, just that big presence. But how about Thomas Harley? Everything he's done with his game. People at the time may have thought, ah, oh, you know, we'll see. He's uh, setting himself they up for a good he, future. Thought in the he NHL. was soft, just a, an offensive kind of guy, couldn't play the defensive game. He's an NHL draft pick now, and he worked on his game. Absolutely. We got to remember here, I mean, this age group, it's not a closed book with where their skill set will be, right? I mean, they've got growth potential. Big time. They're working hard. You know, there's some natural talent out there, but there's some ability here to pick up new skills. Everybody's gonna have a different path to where they end up in their hockey career. It's always fantastic to watch that, as there's a hit attempt by Leonard. We haven't seen too many of those in this game. Sadarenko's a big guy. He leads that Red Wings offense. He knows that he's usually targeted out there for the hits, because he's kind of on his own. He's in a panic now to get his stick. He wants to get out there on the next shift. Near. That's a good hit though. Shoulder down, clean hit, man had the puck, nothing towards the hit, head. That's the part of the game where it still can be physical. People say, say it's too soft now. No, it's player safety first, but we can still have a physical game. I think that's perfect execution and on team, how to handle a hit. And Team Black kind of holding onto the puck, trying to make the best yep. possible play down by three. Coach Laura Stacy along with John Wynn Stanley. They're gonna try and get this offense going. You know the D's gonna activate here. I mean, this could turn into 11-2, it could turn into 6-6, but the D's gonna get active for this team in black. And you know, Pete, following this, and after this year's done, we're gonna have some guys in the OHL, we're gonna have some guys maybe playing Junior A, and then don't forget, too, about the midget age group. Taking that extra year, some guys has really paid off, and they have the midget draft as well for the OHL. 
Well, if you haven't been picked up, I mean, the midget, the midget age group now, I mean, it's it's so good compared to where yeah. it was 20 years ago. So players are staying a little closer to home for one extra year, getting a lot of playing time, being able to get called up to junior teams as much as possible, yep. and getting the opportunity to get that playing time closer to home. Going into the OHL, you're 16 and you're playing against 17, 18, 19, and 20 year olds. I mean, that's a lot to ask. There's a quick shot by Lashing, deflects and goes wide as Nelson swipes at that. It sure is. I mean, it's a daunting task. You're away from home, but, you know, it's what some of these guys were born for. We see McDavid and Wright and some of the big names we've mentioned. They, uh, some of those guys enter that loop and do not miss a beat. Some people, it just takes time, but. Lots of time on the journey. It's, a, as they always say, a marathon, not a sprint when it comes to your career in hockey. And, and this is just one of the awesome stepping stones on the way. Something like this. We mentioned the crowd tonight is outstanding. I mean, it is packed. You look at both ends of the ice. We're three people deep standing at the glass. So it's been an awesome turnout. It's not just your parents and your scouts, but there are just fans of the game who want to Absolutely. see the and next loop of, of players that are going to be coming minor up. Minor midget AAA doubleheaders. There's fans that are there just to see some good hockey. Those were uh, my favorite Tuesdays, Pete. We got to do two games together for five straight years, and I'm thankful for it. Wish we could do it, as there's a nice save by Downey. But I still relish the opportunity that we can still cover the GTHL oh, top prospects game together. GTHL breakout TV with this game, but you can get on YouTube and find some of those grads now that are in the NHL and the old playing. And they were all on, you know, we can say Rogers TV was a partner back at the time. They're not available in the Toronto area now. So, but a lot of good players have come through that program. You better believe it. So we've got 11 and a half to go now in this third period. Oh, there's a pass in front, intercepted. Faccinelli tried a couple moves left, right, and then he ended up going five hole. But the downy that's move. That's gonna be tough. For the down, I was just the about to say. The downy move. I don't think he did. I don't think he bit on any of those head fakes. And oh, it's just a poor pass right up the middle that led to that last scoring chance. And that that one goes in the back of the net. It gets Team uh, Stacy right back into this one. Faginelli we'll really trying to get it, and Sermon needs to be restrained there. I don't know if Faginelli grabbed on first. It can get heated. The linesman did a good job, but the referees are going to put them in the box here because, unfortunately, it just went on a little too long. Yep. So offsetting there. It's going to be five on five as referee Matt Scott lets both coaches know. Well, there's another sub that you don't see too often. Baccinelli, A, he's getting his stick from the other team's bench, so that's definitely something you don't see too often as he one now piece. goes into the penalty box. Well, uh, not used to the prospects game, but again in the third period, like I said, that's when it starts to hit home a bit. Like this game is going to be over soon. We need to get in here and try and get back and win this. So sometimes your emotions get the better of you. But Sederov comes back the other way. Vogelsberg's shot. That's blocked. Vogelsberg has it now. Sederov. Shot there by Van Fleet. Not sure if Ricci saw that or he's just positioned well as that one seemed to go off his blocker or his stick and then wide to this far corner. Another turnover up the middle. Here's Vogelberg. Oh my goodness, that took three deflections on the way and just goes over the crossbar. Poor Ricci's dealt with some crazy stuff at his end of the ice. As Van Fleet misses that one. Piccinino is on him, the feisty four checker for Team Stacy. There's a nice little move. Too many moves though, that time by Mir. Here's Simpson. Piccinino, Piccinino, excuse me, behind him, who now has the puck. Gets by Mir. DeAngelis, oh, it's right there. Leonard now winds up, his shot's blocked. Nice job there. These guys have been fearless in terms of getting in shot block lane. This one's shot back into the zone as we approach the halfway mark here in this third period. Here is Mir. Mir sends that one over for a cross ice feed and just out of his reach. There asking for that one was Andrade. As it's held now by Ricci. Well, 9.58 to go, so you have 10 minutes in the third. You know you're gonna see the D get active for Black. 
White's got to be ready for it as well, right? I mean, their forwards are going to hang a little bit high. And you got to figure, even though it's a top prospects game, he's got to still play for the win, be smart about it. And you can see it right now. Take a look where Bianconi is. He's the big power forward for the Domino's Flyers. He was up high just to make sure he backs up the four check. Bayless ensures this gets out of the zone. Now it's best feeling the pressure from Bayless. Into the zone now, here's Ramsey. Backpedaling a little bit with a four checker on him and he does get that pass out. It's tipped, nice stick by Bayless, but he's on the wrong side, side excuse me, of center ice. So we'll bring it back into Team Clark zone who have the three goal lead with 9.28 to go. Well, you can see Sean Ramsey, who's leading that Toronto Young Nats defense score. He just put it in reverse. It looked like he was skating just as fast as he was skating forward as he tried to get it out of the zone. Pimis wins the draw. Now they're trying something different, having him out there with Lenvinsky, one of the top scorers for the Marlies and the JRC Connect. Probably the only time we'll see that throughout the course of a season as it is best who goes far side. Looking for a cross-ice feed. It's been a lot of near-side blue line to far-side blue line, cross-ice feeds trying to open up the play and lead to entering the zone with possession, as you mentioned, and speed as Bayless gets his shot right through there. Ricci makes the easy save with not much going on. In their season, of course, Gearing up now, there's going to be a bit of a break at this age group because the Youth Olympic Games, which is sanctioned by the Olympic movement, has hockey in it, and Canada's going to have a team. So this group in the GTHL is going to be shutting down for a hiatus. No one will be playing because some of the players will be representing Canada. And then, Bill, you're in our favorite March festive moment. I the OHL it. Cup comes into town yeah, here right. at Scotiabank Pond as well. And some really good teams in the OMHA and the American side as well. Honey Baked and Compuware if they're available. Quinty looks great this year, Southern Tier. So it's gonna be a wide open uh, affair. It won't just be some of the GT. And that one deflected. It was the point shot initially by Sermon, who again, he has been all over and I believe that's Delic who got the tip on. It was definitely tipped, as you can tell by Ricci's reaction. He got on that one off the heel, and it goes in. But how about Sermon? Again, another shot that gets through, and another goal for his side. And that's the simple game. And I mean, it's tough to look at a box score every now and then for the defenseman and evaluate them. But being able to put it on net, make sure that it gets there. Delic is an amazing offensive player. I don't know if he gets as many deflections as we think, because he's so great at gaining the zone, great shot but certainly showed you some soft hands right there. And tough for Ricci to get anything going when you've got this kind of momentum for the team in white. And Delic, look at that effort, and entering the zone offside. Was LeBlanc. Almost another odd man break there for uh, Team Clark, as really Team Stacy has no choice but to go for it here. Down by four. So we entered this period 2-2. Not sure what to expect. It was a good sort of back and forth start. But then quickly, once that third goal went in for Team Clark, they haven't slowed down. They got three goals within five minutes. They just got their fourth goal of this period. And now they got that 6-2 lead. It certainly has solidified their game there as Leonard hits Carafile with the shot. This is the line that got them back in, remember? This Facinelli, Devlin, Carafile line trying to get energy go. There's DeAngeli, she's cheating up saying, you know what? I don't want to give up my blue line just yet. We're down by four. And look at Carafile, the playmaker. He's having a great season for Putting this Toronto Young Angus. Nationals team. And he's a guy, he creates a lot of offense. He'll start shooting the puck a little bit more. That'll make his passing game even better. Oh, there's Castle with a great individual effort. But talk about Ricci, who again, he's kind of been hung out to dry in this third period. Another basically semi-break What an amazing him. save. Great but you're save, down by 6-2. The fans are a little out of it. That was a phenomenal save by Adam Ricci. It's just been quality chance after quality chance for Team Clark in this one. And they're seven minutes away from a big victory here for our 11th annual GTHL top prospects. Thank you, of course, to Under Armour and everybody involved in putting this on. I mean, year in and year out, Pete, I always come here to check it out. It's bigger and better every year. 
And the crowd is always there, but the production, you know, from the whole GTHL staff and everybody involved, it's just turned into an awesome event for these guys at this age. And I can't say enough how thrilled I am to be back doing it. It's a fun age group. And I mean, people, we've said this on other broadcasts in our, our past life together, Bill. They think minor midget AAA, OHL draft, you're going to deal with a lot of attitude. It's the exact opposite. You got a hockey player mentality, a team mentality. Always been able to get the coaches to give us info. The players are cool when they see the broadcast team. It's doing a great job of bringing you the sights and sounds tonight. And you know what? This is just one of those things. It's so hard to get 40 players, the right ones. You can always have a little bit of debate, even at this age group. Yep. And Hockey Canada looks at events like this. Now, there will be a OHL Gold Cup in May, which Hockey Canada uses to evaluate players. So will these 40 players be the same ones there in May? We'll see. Last year, there were eight changes by the time we got to the end of the season. There's a quick shot, and that one stopped by Downey, who, again, if you're just tuning in, it's basically been Downey between the pipes the whole way. An unfortunate incident with Di Vincentis uh, when he came in, two players collided into him. Hopefully he'll be okay, but he decided to sit this one out. But uh, Kyle Downey, not worse for wear in a game that maybe a little bit of a longer game than he's used to being in or was expecting to be in, but he's just been very poised back there uh, behind, uh, sorry, behind the, uh, behind his squad. And his defense score has been great. I mean, yeah. you got talented D-men on both sides. The d core on White's been able to carry a little bit more of the play to support this forwards team. This one fandom. George back at the point. Makes a move. Now he creates some space for himself. But That's the his shot. game. Yes, sir. That's that his offensive move. game. I mean, we've talked about a lot of love for the junior Canadians, and we've been given a little bit more now to the Nats and Marlies, and you see why when you look at the depth they have. I mean, there's just no easy games here. I know you can oh. look at that 112 battle, but really. Every night you've got to be healthy, so injuries, a little bit of bad luck could derail you in a playoff series. Ebbs and flows throughout the whole hockey year as that's easily stopped by Ricci. With our four goal scorers in this period for Team Clark. It was Tatarenko who gave them the 3-2 lead, and then they haven't stopped since that. Lavoie, Sebastian added to that. That was three goals within the five minutes, and Delic not long ago with a nice little deflection, and that might have sealed it if it wasn't already over and done with for Team Clark, but let's see what kind of fight we see in Team Stacy. And could you say, you know, it's kind of an intangible that maybe a scout will look at how will someone perform when they're down 6-2 in what might be a frustrating game? They watch so many games, you know, and I, I see them putting these little notes down. I mean, they know the skill set. They know the growth potential. That's an expensive Some bad explosion. luck there. It was a big shot there by Jan Lashing, the star for the Senators. Leonard keeps it in. So Tedarenko even with a little bit of going a... Going off for a change, and unfortunately was in the wrong place in the crossfire. Hopefully he'll be okay. Nice patience there as, oh boy. A little bit of miscommunication. Sermon though recovers nicely. They thought they were in the zone, that maybe they weren't, that maybe they decided to pull out, but. Nice hands up. by Moldenhauer to get a little touch there. Leonard's not gonna give up the blue line down by four, we know that. No, sir. Nice centering feed for Carafile that's had a pretty good third period as number 12 for Team Stacy. Primo and Tucker, the Toronto Young Nationals young forward. You called it. That Leonard is just going to be aggressive. He's sturdy. Seems like one of those guys might not be the biggest, but it seems like you can't knock him off the puck. And you figure, you know, if you finish third, you might have to play the reps. And we've talked about how many reps players right now, you know, or the Kings or the Senators. That first round's not going to be easy for the top four. I mean, look at what DeAngelis yeah. did. I mean, the Kings have great goaltending tandem. Di Vicenzis is out. They've got uh, Kingo and Net as well. I mean, they've got great goaltending. So one through four, they might be able to enjoy it during the regular season, but come playoff time, 
you're going to have a, a tough battle in the first round. There's a chance there. You're down by four. Moldenhauer fire that one right at the hash marks. Was looking for the pretty pass. Now he gets another chance and he gets the pretty pass across. And Lashing is the recipient who can't bury. And four minutes exactly to go on the clock. Down by four. And it's your fourth power play of the game. Perhaps that's a little magic right there that they need to get a goal and get in something going. A little luck in the numbers, you would hope. And here comes that line that opened it up for the team in black. I mean, Devlin, like we called him, the ultimate support player. He'll go into the corner, he'll forecheck. Carol File, you've seen the moves, Bill. You've seen the hands. And Facinelli, he'll muck it up and create some offense. Absolutely. I was about to say, Facinelli's like perfect complement to that group out there right now because he'll rough it up a bit and battle for those pucks. You always want your hardest workers on the, to be your guys on the power play. Well, certainly Stoikov's got an easy option here to get it out. They want to get some shots on goal here. I mean, two minute power play. Can you get three or four shots on goal? Make Downey earn it. This is sent in down low. Facinelli's in there. I've been around coaches who have always said Pete as Peely shot is blocked there by Stoikov. That power play time isn't easy. Take it easy, fun time. You should be the hardest working player out there to recover any loose puck in the offensive zone to create second and third chance opportunities for your line. So it's not just about the pretty passing and trying to get that tic-tac-toe finish. It's the little things on the power play that'll make a difference and give you that extended offensive zone time. Well, someone's got to go get the puck, right? <laughs> I mean, yep. your goal scorer is waiting in the slot. They want to come in with the puck on their stick. Can't get that. So now someone's got to work hard those motivational battles you win on the board you come out of the corner stealing the puck and that's what the, the scouts have been talking about too right creating more offense here is peachy nino i gave my award for best hair to ty nelson of the jrc so i think peachy nino is going to get my favorite name of the game the toronto titans forward he's one of their dynamic forwards and we've got plenty of those in this game and as i mentioned a team that has a big time Goal scoring. Speaking of, Vogelsberg stopped there by Ricci. Well, his, team, his, teammate, his teammate knew he was going to go high. He's a little tired there being chased down after doing a great job on the PK. Here's George. Smooth moves. Cuts into the middle and the wrist shot right into the bread basket as it's known. That's Downey's bread basket. We'll see. We get down to two minutes to go. Be an MVP presentation at the end of the game as well. Another Teams stop are back to even strength now too. So if you pull the goalie if you're black and say let's just try and get a goal here. Well, a lot of prospects games or games like this can end up being run and gun offense. Dowdy said nope, not tonight. He's kept it at two. I mean, he must have seen at least. 30 or more shots on net by now. And now some pressure being applied late with a minute and 45 seconds to go. We're back to five on five. Best chance during that power play for Team Stacy was the breakaway for the penalty killers. That was Vogelsberg, who's been flying tonight. He's put on a nice display. With 1.30 to go. On the 11th edition, partner, takes me down in my first ever one here. Tom Wilson, Scott Lawton. You had Pellick. You had a whole bunch of interesting names in there. And then you had a guy named Sean Monahan. Monahan. Who didn't have the greatest prospects game, but come OHL Cup time with the Mississauga Rebels, he was on fire and arrived on the scene, went on to the great career in the OHL, and of course now, and Calgary's one of the older guys. That's making me feel old. When guys like yep. Wilson Lawton, Sean Monahan, and Pellick, who were in that first game in the 2009-2010 season, are considered like NHL veterans. As we've got a minute to go here in this third period. And not long after, after how about Domi, Nurse, McDavid, names like that starting yeah. to come through the system? You know, watching Darnell Nurse and Max Domi on that Don Mills Flyers team, well, phenomenal team. They had their rivalry with the Marlies back in the day. Here's Andrade. And we've seen some crazy ones. Oh, nice job by Ricci to get across on the wraparound. 
We saw talking about some of the rivalries. Chikrin and Mete versus McLeod, and we've seen both Mike McLeod and his brother Ryan McLeod. The Marlies that year, remember that year we had the Flyers, solid team with Tortora, Levin, and Newman, as we've got 15 seconds to go now, taking on the Marlies, of course, so had some awesome rivalries throughout the years, and we've got the playoffs to look forward to, and then the OHL Cup, so these guys are gonna see a lot more of each other, but we saw a lot of great action here tonight as this one dwindles down. It was 2-2 entering the third period and an offensive explosion for Team Clark. Back behind Downey who put in an excellent job between the net. And they are your winners of our 11th annual GTHL Top Prospects game. Congratulations to Team Clark, Beaver, Corson, all the players that were represented and their coaching staff. But how about giving a hand to Stacy Primo and Tucker's team as well. They battled and it was a close game after 40 and just got away with them from them in the final 20 minutes. They went for it early, right? They were down 3-2. They tried to close at 4-2, 5-2. And the team in white, coached by Paul Tamburo from the Toronto Young Nationals, they really made a statement here saying, if you want to take this many chances, we're going to burn you. And Team Black just couldn't meet that offensive explosion here late in the game. And you gotta love just, uh, you kind of alluded to it, the variety of skill in this, and it was all on display. This is a 36, 50 goal scorers. We saw great puck moving defensively. We saw guys who could get shots through, just little qualities that you love to see in a prospects game, and just in general, when it comes down to seeing your team, especially as the playoffs are near, nearing for all of these squads. You saw great high-end skill from the forwards. You saw grinders, you saw four checkers, you saw guys who short-handed were aggressive. You guys saw guys who could man a power play. You saw everything. And that's really what I loved about the game tonight. And it was special to be back here with you, Pete, after so long as... The our, big trophy comes trophy. out. Ooh, that was a good save. It but, might be the biggest yeah. trophy in hockey, just a I little see. heavy. And I like Ty Nelson. He dropped the gloves right away to say, okay, I'll help you out. As Brian, Kyle, Lassila, and Angie Shapira from the GTHO office are in charge. That's intimidating. Seeing the trophy break the table. If you're the winning team now, you got to go pick it up. <laughs> That's one tough do job to think about. So I think right now they're kind of going over who's going to get the... They're going to be like, okay, I need a little pass. help. Yeah. So what we're going to be at is you've got the MVPs, one from each team. Oh. Okay. And it'll okay. be uh, Dan Schofield from Under Armour representing Under Armour and the great support for this event. Like I tell you, partner, last night the players walked in and they could not believe how good those little goodie bags were. They, and then awesome. one guy turned to us as staff. He's like, do I also get to keep the bag? It was like one of those funny moments when he's just so polite. He had all these goodies and he thought the bag was just a holder. And Dan Schofield will be here to present the MVPs. You know, that's all part of this experience for him. It's un unforgettable at this age that they're at. It. We know they're all going to be off and doing bigger and better things with their hockey careers. And we look forward to following them along the way. But this is one of the step, one of the big steps in their minor midget season. And like I said, I just love the variety of skill. Like I said, some of the guys that necessarily aren't putting up a million points in a season, but you know they can get the puck out of your end every single time. And you know what? To all the teams we've talked about from sort of our top three teams, and we had our four, five, and six, you know, all these, all these players wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the team effort that they get night in and night out from all their guys. So it's tough. You can't pick everybody but they have such a well-rounded team that have led them this far. Let's let Doug Ireland take over. And cheers our goal to make all of our athletes reach their full performance potential. Please welcome Dan Scofield, Senior Manager Sports Marketing, who will be presenting the Tiger Craig Memorial MVP winners. <laughs> the player of the game from Team Stacey Primo Tucker is from the Junior Canadians, number eight, Pano Femus 
is your MVP from Team Stacy. Primo and Tucker and scored a goal tonight. MVP going to the Tendi, Kyle Downey. He played a bit more than he anticipated tonight, but he looked good, allowing only two goals against. What an effort, picking up the win. Would Kyle Downey please come forward to accept the GTHL Top Prospects Cup? Oh, so they're gonna put the pressure on the goalie. Well, usually it's the two goalies, right? So, I mean, he's got a little extra duty. Brian Kyla, the big dude from the GTH off, is going to help there. He's probably going to get in the photo. That's a good way to get into the photo op. Oh. oh boy. With how calm, calm and cool Downey is, that's the most pressure he's felt all night. As his team huddles around him now and they celebrate with the trophy. Congratulations again to all the players on team, Clark, Weaver, and Corson. And that'll do it. A 6-2 victory for Team Clark over Team Stacy. Third period explosion for four goals is what gets the job done. Hello again, everybody. It's Billy G and Peter K. one last time to close things out. And well, I said it off the top. We threw them in a blender. We had rivals on the same team. We had teammates playing each other. But what we got was a great showcase of display of what these players are capable at this age and just an entertaining hockey game. And we learned our lesson many years ago, folks. We didn't do predictions, right? We knew that was a bad idea, but what you saw was two even teams. Black came out, had a great rush in there, made a 2-2 bill, and we thought, okay, is the momentum changing? And as soon as White figured, hey, they're catching up to us, they could, took control of the game. Yeah, I think you mentioned it too. They were taking some chances, Team Stacy, in that third period when they were down by the goal, almost getting caught a couple times, but you have to also give those forwards on Team Clark some love. Those guys were coming back and they were creative enough to get themselves out of their zone quick. Sometimes it was a good outlet pass by the D, right, right. but boy, oh boy, quality scoring chances that we saw in that third period. Yeah, a great, a great display of just kind of coming together. Black had to open it up, and now you could say, hey, it's a prospects game, go all out. Are you still trying to win the game, right? I mean, you're gonna get your photo ops, you got the gear. You could tell Black really wanted to try and get back into the game and be as successful as they could. And really, I don't think it was much coaching. The celebrities never take credit for it. It was just a great move by the team in white to get that lead and hold on to it. All right, well, just like we had many years ago, Pete, someone randomly walking in and joining us for a split second on that shot. We'll call it a night. So, Team Clark, and they get it done. Six goals, six different goal scorers. It was 2-2 entering the third. Great finish. Most importantly, we wish all these players the best of luck finishing their season. It was a great showcase here tonight what the GTHL has in store for us. I look forward to the playoffs and, hey, that OHL Cup as well. And, Pete, it was a pleasure to be back in the booth with you. Yeah, 11 down. Let's go, brother. All right. That'll do it for us. Take care. The 11th annual GTHL Top Prospects game powered by Under Armour in the books. Eight goals combined, 6-2 win. Great goaltending, a little bit of everything. We'll see you soon for the playoffs and the OHL Cup. Can't wait.